Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in today's deep learning playground intro session. I very much appreciate you all coming and, uh, you know, like, feel free to ask anything on the way. Like, I don't expect this info session to be a fairly long one. It's the slideshow is probably going to be around uh, 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll leave the rest of the time for questions if you guys have any. And most importantly, just remember to fill out the attendance form, which I will both have a QR code on, and I have put the link at the chat on Zoom. So, you know, why don't we get started? Oh, and if I may, um, I forgot to mention that one of our other developers have joined us with here today. His name is Samarf, and um, he has been working a lot on the backend development and the and the socket IO development, which is important for us to kind of you know deliver data to and from the front end and the back end. So yeah. Hey guys, nice to meet you. Hello. Oh, and by the way, this meeting is recorded. Uh, any of you are free to request for the meeting if uh, for the recording if any of you want later. So yeah, why don't we get started? So again, the attendance link is both put in the Zoom chat and as well as uh, a QR code here that I've put in if you want to scan and uh, fill out the attendance form. That attendance form is quite necessary as that is your attendance will be considered uh, in your for your application for this project. So yeah, let's get started. So hi everyone, my name is Ferris. I am the main front end developer for this project, and I am one of the co-founders along with Karthik. It was Karthik who originally dreamed of this idea of you know developing this kind of playground where people with no technical experience can can work with the tools of machine learning, basically, you know, presenting a no code, low code solution to uh, the tools of um, machine learning, deep learning, and uh, anything in that is under that behemoth of an umbrella. So, yeah. So what is deep learning? Uh, now, before I get into this, I just want to mention that although the name of the project is Deep Learning Playground, we are not necessarily focused only on deep learning. Uh, like it was, deep learning was our, one of our first facets, one of our first things that we want the project to do. But, you know, as our iterations uh, went on and on, we figured out, you know, hey, maybe we can expand this idea to, uh, traditional ML as well, and maybe other other aspects of machine learning, like uh, neural language processing or audio data processing, which, you know, is still work to be done, but, you know, it's something that I am very much amazed and excited to be a part of. So, you know, deep learning is, a, is this part, a subset of machine learning, which is a subset of AI. It is, a way for us to teach computers how to think for themselves and make decisions that roughly may make a, uh, a human or more specifically how a human brain thinks. We want automation, we want to take automation to the next level and we want um, like those automations to be able to handle very difficult and comprehensive tasks as we you know, move further and further, like more and more, there's gonna be more and more applications of machine learning. And as an organization, as a nonprofit organization that wants to democratize the use of machine learning, as well as the knowledge of data science, this project will help us advance that mission to propagate the tools and power of machine learning for everyone, no matter your background, no matter your um, education or even expertise in coding or machine learning in general. Okay, so yeah, presenting the LP, a no code solution for machine learning. So I am not going to run it on my laptop for now simply because, like, uh, I just can't take it. It just takes a few resources to run it. So let me just share you this GIF. 
that'll hopefully show you what it looks like. So, you know, this is what um, the UI of the uh, project looks like. So as you can see, uh, you know, you have the option to choose a subset of uh, machine learning layers, transformations as you may call it, to transform and train the data set. So what you do is that given a, a CSV data set, which you may upload it yourself, or you may choose from um, some default data sets, you will, what you will do is that you will apply these machine learning layers and those layers will help in like training the data. And after, uh, so yeah, so we try our best to make the front end very easy to use. So as you can see, it has some elements of drag and drop and drop down just to, you know, give that idea of simplicity and the idea of playful background. And, you know, as you can see, we've got a lot of deep learning parameters um, that a user can choose and all of them are very easy to choose. And obviously like there are guards to make sure that um, the parameters are valid for those machine learning layers. So yeah, after we train the data set then the output is gonna like print out these visualizations as well as some downloadable files including the onxx file and the .pt file so you know this is a confusion matrix heat map and code snippet in case you want to like run it later uh, in your own code so this is what we have right now for um for deep learning we're also currently venturing into emission model processing uh, which if you see on the top right there, there's an image model um, subset that is still, you know, work in progress. Uh, but, you know, I encourage you to test it locally when you get a chance to run the project on your own computer. So, yeah, definitely a lot of things that we're working on. So what is our tech stack? At the very top, uh, we have where we are currently deploying our project and that's uh, on AWS. So we chose AWS as our cloud provider simply because it, it not only provides some level of credit for us to start with, which can be helpful because um, we, we are running into a lot of costs uh, of running this program like this is a very resource intensive program and we you know as developers we really have to try and think our best on how we can reduce that amount of resources that uh, the program uses so you know we've um we've done quite a lot of work into that including using fargate to sort of compartmentalize or separate the front end and the back end because we know that the and the backend is going to use a lot more resources than the front end. So, you know, we have mitigation, uh, mitigation strategies over there. So aside from Fargate, we, all, we are also using this AWS database tool called DynamoDB, uh, a serverless function called Lambda, S3, ECS, and other services. And then deep, uh, going deeper into the stack, we are using React.js, which is this JavaScript library that, um, that uses you know, HTML that populates HTML based on some scripts that you write in JavaScript. So if you don't have any experience with React, no problem at all. Think of React as just JavaScript and HTML and CSS combined together, but a more uh, complex mechanism in the background that's helping you. It is certainly more helpful and more useful than uh, traditional HTML. And I do, you know, recommend you to try to use it uh, when you get a chance. And obviously we are using Python as our backend, uh, backend tag stack. So we use a bunch of traditional ML libraries such as PyTorch, FastAI, and Scalar. But you know, we're, we're more than happy to venture into more um, packages, more libraries, should you find one that is useful. Okay, so what are we tackling now? Um, user dashboard slash compartmentalization. That just means we want to provide a more individualized experience for each user visiting our visiting our project. So instead of you know you uploading the data set and just waiting and waiting and waiting for a few hours uh, for the training to be done, because what we have an idea of is that we can um, let the user sign in 
and then they can upload their data set, they can train their data set, they can close the window, and then when they open the window again, uh, they will be able to see the status, and if the, res if the training is done, they can see the results. So that is uh, uh, an important thing that we are trying to tackle right now. Uh, we are also trying to introduce a beginner mode. So think of you know a high school student or someone who has absolutely no background in machine learning to you know just feel the very basics of machine learning. So we are introducing a beginner mode, uh, featuring the most basic settings, and obviously there's going to be an advanced setting, advanced mode toggle if you want to use more advanced ones. Some visual dashboards using uh, Apache super Apache superset, some other um, neural nets, uh, pre-trained models, natural language slash audio processing, um, and you know a couple more issues right now on our GitHub. We have sixty plus issues, and you know like I'm sure we can. Uh, we are continuously finding more and more ways we can improve our uh, project. So you know if you have any uh, ideas, you know we're more than happy to accommodate them. Okay, so what can we expect from you? We, um, although experience is helpful, experience in either Python, machine learning in general, or React.js, or even AWS, um, that is good, but it's not the number one thing that we're looking for. We're mostly looking for passion. You know, if you don't know something, but as long as you've got that commitment, that passion to learn, then, uh, you know, by all means, we will be very much welcoming for you. I know when I uh, first started, you know, uh, doing this project, I didn't have that much experience in React or much less React Bootstrap, but um, this project has not only taught me the skills to um, use uh, React at a more advanced level, but it has also uh, taught me and I'm sure a lot of other developers the advanced the more advanced tools of GitHub, for example, GitHub Actions and automated bots, how you can configure GitHub to automatically run uh, tests on the front end and the back end to make sure that everything is passing and nothing is broken, for example. We do expect uh, you to attend Zoom standups uh, every Friday at 9 p.m. So standups is, um, think of it like you summarizing what you have done over the week to everyone just to keep everyone updated it's fairly short usually and uh, yeah it's just a place for where you can like contribute ideas tell what you tell, tell others what you've been working on and what obstacles are you facing and you know maybe someone else will be able to help you with those obstacles contribute ideas contribute to uh, the issues if you find a bug, if you want a feature, then feel free to go to the issues and write one down. Um, and lastly, as new contributors, for, you will be assigned temporary roles under a mentor who will you know, help guide you through uh, the first week or so. And from then on, you know, we'll make sure that you get uh, accustomed and properly introduced into the project. Okay, how can I prepare myself for this project? Um, just make sure you have the very basics of JavaScript, HTML, Python, and some machine learning concepts. If you don't have, uh, you know, such strong concepts or understanding in machine learning, that is fine as well. We at uh, the SGT, well, more specifically, Kartik, he has designed this online uh, course, online bootcamp which also runs in person here at Georgia Tech. If you uh, want you know, a very quick bootcamp on machine learning all the way from how to use Python all the way into deep learning. So yeah, that's basically it for this presentation. Now, you know, I am uh, to talk to you more about my experience. You know, this is a project that we, just started at the beginning of this summer. Uh, we started with you know just one page uh, on how I can drag and drop these parameters, allow for a seamless and cool for the user experience, and uh, simultaneously allow for this mechanism one that is expandable, one that is extendable in case that we want to add um, other features. Like I've definitely you know learned 
uh, and incorporated a lot of those best coding practices while I was uh, while I was working on this project, and I you know never looked back. So yeah, that's my story. Hey, Samar, are you do you want to share your story? Maybe. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I think DLP is one of the best places to start off. Like, if you have, do not have much experience or like anything whatsoever, to be honest, if you just know basic Python or like React and stuff, I think it's a great place to start. I remember, like at the start of the summer, I was just learning how to do a bunch of web dev stuff, and you know, I really wanted to join a project so that I could apply my skills and. I thought like I would join DLP. I heard about it from another friend of mine, Vidushi, who I think is also here in this um, in this meeting. So there were a lot of different components that are there in the both front end and back end. So many different services we were using, AWS related, React, Flask, and all these sort of stuff. So I it was actually pretty scary to start off with, but Faris and Karthik had created a very collaborative and uh, environment where people could easily just join in and start working right from the first day. It's just amazing. I like over the course of uh, these three months, I've like experienced working with AWS DynamoDB, a bit with Fargate and ECS. I've worked on socket.io related stuff and you know just things related to Flask, Express, not Express, sorry, um, React, and so many different things. It's just amazing. Like um, uh, my one of my first issues was to create a generalized DynamoDB uh, module, basically. So like DynamoDB is a database storage for uh, Amazon. So uh, we were planning on implementing a bunch of databases, but each uh, module that we were creating that would handle each of these functions of the databases took up like 170 lines of code. So like I created a generalized module that could easily just initialize these in a, like 10 lines or something. <laughs> Um, I also worked on um, switching our front end back end communication to um, web socket based, which is event based architecture. So with this, we were also able to produce real time progress bars for um, uh, our yeah, that would display the uh, progress of our training functions in the front end, which I thought was pretty cool, honestly. And, uh, you know, what Faris was saying uh, earlier as well, you get to experiment a lot with different modules over here. And, you know, nobody tells you what to use and what not to use. You can really experiment with a lot of things, come up with your own ideas and own issues. It's just a great place to be at. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that's um, my experience at DLP. And feel free to ask me any questions. Um, yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for uh, for your story, Samar. Yeah, like Samar has been, you know, a very excellent contributor. Like my favorite um, contribution from him will definitely be the web socket uh, thing, which you know allowed us to share real time uh, real time progress on the backend. So you know, a fundamental problem that we had um, before Samar came in was. Uh, Okay, so I click on the train button and I see that, you know, it's training, it's training, it's training, but there's no way for me to know, like, how, where, in which part of the training am I in? Am I, like, at the uh, first epoch? Am I, like, almost done? Um, and, you know, that that was really frustrating. We can see our progress in the terminal, but, you know, nobody sees the terminal on the front end. So, you know, I really love uh, the contribution of sockets, uh, although I do know that we might be planning to switch on to something else because there was that is causing a bit of an issue, which is totally fine, you know, like bumps come and go, but you know, the important thing is like we know what tools to use and like some of that helped us a lot along the way. So yeah, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Yeah, of course. Any other contributors want to share their experience, maybe? I can go. So uh, I'm Vidushi. I'm 
kind of a back end front end developer so you can say a full stack developer at dsgd and uh, so i i started in may yeah may so in summer right and um, a dnp was really good for a project for me uh, because even though i know like i know python and i didn't know react by that point but and i didn't even know git so if anything like that you know is uh you're hesitant because you don't know the things i don't think that would be very difficult dlp has um like you have a lot of developers who are extremely good at stuff right and then there are stand-ups you can reach out to anyone at discord and then we also have a thing called as wiki which is uh each developer what they do whatever uh bugs or whatever problems they faced uh, they would just keep a documentation of everything and you know let other developers know that okay if you are facing this problem this is how you can solve it so i was able to learn git through dlp and i also learned react so in my first month of uh, working here i was just working on back end and i created some stuff and i was very hesitant to go into front end because i've never worked there before like in high school i made an html css page but that was it um and yeah a lot of people supported me dlp being uh, very flexible so you you can work on back end and you know after a month okay you think like maybe i don't want to do back end you can switch to front end um you can also work on uh, maintainability or aws stuff so we also have things like GitHub Actions, uh, which is yet another great thing. And then we also have unit testings. So um, all these things are, you know, important. And uh, yeah, all of these, uh, like, even if you just stick to one and, you know, you think that you're doing very well in that, you can work like that, or you can just explore a lot of different things in ELP, which I think is pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like Vidushi has been, you know, a very awesome contributor all the way from the start. Like I remember when she created the confusion matrix, um, you know, like it was an awesome feature. And uh, to, the, to this day, you know, it remained, it remained a central part of the front end results. So yeah, thank you, Vidushi. Anybody else wants to talk, if any? Okay, going once, going twice. All right. Uh, what about the you know new attendees? Uh, well, prospective uh, contributors. Do you guys have any questions to any of us? All right, going once, going twice, so, all right. So uh, or just a couple of logistics. Um, after this meeting uh, tomorrow or on Friday, I will be sending each of you all, um, you know, the onboarding instructions, how you can get started and, uh, you know, basically uh, where to, you know, where to get started basically. We will be using Discord for all of our communications outside of Zoom meeting calls, obviously. So we're using Discord most of the time. Um, if you want to, like, uh, you know, chat with another developer or uh, chat with any one of us, that is completely fine as well. But yeah, like everything will be done on Discord, and every Friday we'll have standups at 9 p.m. So if no one has any questions. Um, thank you all for your time. Just make sure to fill out the attendance form and we'll reach out to you in the next few days. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll see you then. Thank you.